Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can use static classes to save and retrieve data between scenes. Static classes are created by adding the static keyword before a normal class definition. But they have some very special properties. These static classes can't extend mono behavior like your normal classes. And since they can't extend mono behavior, they can't be attached to an in game object in your scene. These static classes can't be instantiated, which means you can't use the new keyword to create a new instance of the static class. And inside a static class, all the members must be static. Members mean the variables and the functions. So every variable and every function must be static. And the static class can't have a public constructor since they can't be instantiated but they have a private constructor constructor which you can use to instantiate or initialize some values static classes are useful as a container of many static helper functions a very good example would be a static math class like the system dot math class where you have many different static helper functions like mat dot sign or cos etc the other use of static classes is holding data which i will be showing you shortly inside a unity project we have a very simple setup here inside unity we have two scenes in the first scene we have a normal input field and a button we will use this input field to get the value and using this button we will set that value on the static script static class and in the next scene we will just get the value from our static class and then display it on the screen so for that operations i have created two scripts the value getter which will get the value from the static class and in this scene i have the value setter class whose job is to get the value from the input field and then on button press uh, write that value into the static class. Now we will go on and create the actual static class. The process of creating a static class is similar to creating any other normal class. You can go inside your script folder, go to create and create a new C sharp script. Let's name it static test. Now going into your code editor, the first thing that you need to do is to add the static keyword and then also remove the inheritance from mono behavior because you can't inherit static classes from mono behavior so we first remove the mono behavior and then add the static keyword now as i've told you in the previous slide that all the members must be static classes and since we are also not inheriting from mono behavior we can't have the start and update functions now this is a static class now in order to use static classes to save data you will have to create appropriate variables of that data type and on those variables you will pass on your data for saving and the next guy who wants that data will retrieve that data from that variable so in this example i want to save a float value so i will go on and create a public static float let's name it float value and this variable will be used both by both for saving and also retrieving once we have our save location or save variable defined, the next job is to save the actual value onto this variable. So for that, we have this simple value setter script. On the button click, this set value function will be called. And how you set or change a value on a static class is by directly writing the static class name, which in this case will be static text test. And to access any member of the static class, you just write dot and all the public members will be visible to you. 
and we want to change the float value so we will assign static test dot float value to be equal to the value that we get from our input field so what will happen is that when you are in the scene static test when you click this button any value inside this input field will be assigned to the static variable float value in our static class now to retrieve this value is very similar and simple so in our value getter script which will simply get that value and write on to a text UI we can do that directly inside our start function so whenever that scene loads we will just retrieve that value and show it on a text field so we will write value text dot text is equal to and to retrieve that value we will write static the uh, static class name and then the variable name now we also need to add some code in order to change scenes in the play mode because after all we are uh, testing how to pass data between scenes so I have added a code so that on the press of key X we will change to the other scene in both the scripts on the value getter which is in the main scene to change the scene to the static test and in the function in the class value setter I have added the code to change the scene to main scene now coming inside our unity let's go into the play mode and at first we are on the main scene whose job is to just retrieve the data that is saved inside our static class and now it is showing the default value of float which is zero we can press x to go to our value setting scene and we can assign it any value let's say 10 we can press set value to save this value onto our static class and now we can press X to go to our main scene where we can see the value which we are getting from the static class directly has been changed. We can press X to go back to our setter setting scene, change the value, set value, then come back again and see that the value has been changed. Let's not set value, then go back, then the value remains the same as our previously saved value. One thing you will notice when I again go into the play mode is that the value stored in our static class has been again reset to its default value. It's again zero. So this means that whenever you quit your application, whenever your game session ends, the static class loses all its data. So all the data will be reset to its initial value. This means you can't use this method to save your data permanently but only to save data between scenes here i showed you how you can save a float value you can use static classes to store any kind of value any classes any data type any type of variables one useful feature of static classes is that you can add a private constructor a private static constructor to your static classes and this constructor can be used to initialize your static variables so for example let's add a constructor to our static test class it will be static static test. so the construct, uh, constructors always have the same name as their classes so it will be named static test and here you can initialize all your values let's initialize our flow to 5 and this is more useful in cases where the variables are not uh, automatically given a default value. Suppose if you have a custom class or variable of other type where this initialization may be necessary. So now if I have created a constructor and now when I go into the play mode you will see that the initial value uh, saved in my static class is 5 this constructor is called at the when you are in unity editor at the compile time so every time you make some changes to your script or when your project recompiles this constructor will be called just once and when you have deployed your game either on your mobile phone or your PCs this constructor is called 
every time when the game starts and just once on every session so when your game starts this constructor will be called and your values will be initialized and when the game ends this uh, class will be destroyed so you saw how you can very conveniently save and retrieve discrete variables using a static class in the next video I will talk about how you can use don't destroy and load to pass whole scripts and whole game object between different scenes and your whole class and variables are preserved using don't destroy and load.